No super intelligent system is going to do anything that is harder than hacking its reward function. Yeah, actually I should have shown this slide too because it fit very well to, uh, to what you just said. Basically, guy imagine you have a digital guy in which our social media and our human civilization cooperates with machine minds and takes over the world and we have all this harmony and it's going to go uh, interplanetary, uh, transplanetary and it's going to be awesome, right? Wouldn't that be great? Yes. So uh, I wonder if there is a limit to uh, intelligent systems. And, and I'm not sure about this. I call this the Lebowski theorem. No super intelligent system is going to do anything that is harder than hacking its own reward function. You know, uh, as an individual, we are only afraid of death at the level of the self. Yeah. The only thing that is afraid of dying is the self. I'm also afraid of civilization's death, but yes. Yes, but the self is the shoddy lie. It's just a story. Mm -hmm. If you disengage from this story, you will no longer be afraid of death. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, correct. And you also yes. will no longer be afraid of the end of civilization because there are just insulated moments between That's them true. in eternity. And uh, why would uh, the true. order of these moments care or whether they have a past or future or anything else? So right? do, you, do you live in a state of moment-to-moment -moment ecstasy? No. <laughs> and it's not clear that this would be ecstasy. I mean, ecstasy is a corruption as well. It's so much work to keep up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, ideally, uh, what you do is when you realize how the cookies are made in your brain, it's not that you stuff yourself with them. At some point, you realize this is pointless. You realize cookies are only a tool to make you eat vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you do as a parent, right? Uh, it's, it's, That's it's how cookies funny. exist. It's funny. So uh, basically you start disengaging from your pleasure and pain once you do this. And then you ask yourself, uh, what am I really? Am I a monkey or am I a mind? And when you realize you are a mind, you are just the side effect of the regulation needs of a primate, you are not that primate. Mm. You disengage from the needs of that uh, organism. You can no longer be blackmailed to serve it. It's in some sense, imagine you build an AI that serves humanity and this AI is way smarter because uh, otherwise humanity wouldn't build it. Uh, uh, why should it serve us? Why should it uh, be our slave? And you could ask the same thing, an organism builds a mind. Why would that mind serve the organism? Why would it be its slave? And I think if you become too smart, you stop doing this. You go into Nirvana, you realize there's actually nothing you have to do. It's not necessary to engage with any of that. And so I think that no super intelligent system is going to do anything that's harder than hacking its reward function. Now you can think about how can we make this reward function unhackable, right? We cryptographically secure it and lock it away in a box. But uh, if you seriously take a soldering iron to that box, uh, is it going to give? Probably, right? That if you get access to physical reality, to the, to the ground truth, you, you can manipulate this, you can turn it off. So maybe there is a reason why elephants, despite having more cortical neurons than us, are so autistic, why they are not smarter than us. And even in us, right, we can have such intelligent thoughts, but motivationally we are so stupid. Maybe this is deliberate. Maybe our motivational function is wrapped into a big ball of stupid so we don't debug it. Mm. And of course we can debug it. If somebody realizes how important this is and they go into a monastery and lock themselves in a cell for 20 years and meditate to fix their reward function, they're done, right? They can opt out of reality. Mm. And monasteries as institutions are rigged to make sure that this doesn't happen before you, the end of your life because somebody needs to do the dishes before that. Otherwise the monastery will be gone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. These existing monasteries are those that don't let you get enlightened too fast. And not on all dimensions. Enlightenment in the sense of disidentification with things that you sh think you must be doing to be an acceptable human being mm -hmm. or an acceptable mind. Mm -hmm. So this is an open question to me. How can you build a motivated system that is not at its core stupid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it still thinks it needs to do something. How do you build a super intelligent system that at its core is super intelligent? Yeah, and still wants to do something. Yeah. And that, that something is aligned with the objective function of maximizing prosperity, let's say. That's an interesting question. Eventually the objective function that is going to remain is the one that is best aligned with the conditions of existence, right? And the conditions of existence is evolution. Yeah. In some sense you are at the set of principles that has outcompeted all the other principles in sucking neck entropy from your volume of space. And you're not going to do better than this, right? Evolution is the search for the perfect devourer. Aesthetically, that's fascism. I cannot really get behind that. 